Many members and friends are trapped in poverty. This is caused by unjust economic and political systems, plus human greed. That means people caught in poverty don't have the same opportunities as others. It's wrong to blame them for these circumstances. Once, while ministering in a poor area, a pastor apologized to me because there were not more people gathered for a morning class. He explained, most of them are still out looking for something to eat today. My heart broke for them. Are you willing to have your heart broken too? Poverty is not inevitable. Humans choose to keep economic opportunities away from the impoverished. While there was progress in recent decades, poverty is increasing again because of climate change, pandemics, inhumane immigration policies, high inflation, overconsumption by some, and wars. David Beasley, head of the UN World Food Program, said its latest analysis shows that a record 345 million acutely hungry people are marching to the brink of starvation. A 25% increase from 276 million at the start of 2022, before Russia invaded Ukraine on February 24th. The number stood at 135 million before the COVID-19 pandemic in early 2020, according to a news article on July 7 this year. The enduring principles of the church offer an alternative, more hopeful vision for the world. Making responsible choices with that vision in mind has never been more important for the welfare of all of us. Jesus highlighted good news to the poor as an essential in his mission. We are being faithful to Christ through local and global initiatives to abolish poverty and end unnecessary suffering. Good news is more than words or good intentions. Truly good news arises from cooperative efforts with those trapped in poverty to change the conditions that perpetuate poverty. Walking closely with those living in poverty transforms us as we grow closer to them and Christ who is always serving among the least of these. As Henri Nouwen wrote, when Jesus says, what you did to the least of my brothers, you did to me, he is addressing to us a direct invitation not only to help, but to discover the beauty of God in those who are to be helped. This is through the smiles of the children, the hospitality of the people, the expressions they use, the stories they tell, the wisdom they show, the goods they share. There is so much richness and beauty, so much affection and human warmth. World hunger projects funded through worldwide mission ties are one way we do this. This money secures wells for sanitary water, develops fish farming as a food source, offers skills training matched to employment opportunities, and provides microloans for income-producing initiatives. 
Apostle Mombwe reports that a solar-powered irrigation project in two African villages is transforming lives and giving real hope. Support also is provided for ministers working to reduce poverty in the United States. There are proven methods that reduce poverty. We know that empowering women makes a big difference. We know our impact increases when we partner with others. We know that utilizing local resources to meet needs identified by the people helps avoid dependency and creates sustainable efforts. There's much we can do to reduce poverty. Remarkably, there are amazing expressions of grace and generosity among those living in poverty. Obviously, those trapped in poverty have limited financial means. However, they give what they can of money and goods to support church ministries. They want their contributions to support local and worldwide ministries because they desire others to experience the hope they have through community of Christ. And they do this because they see the transformative effect of community of Christ where they live. A new member in a lower income nation once told me that whenever Community of Christ comes to a village, that village becomes better for all. What a wonderful expression of the cause of Zion. Members in lower income areas do not want to be dependent on others. They strive for personal and church self-sufficiency. They just need help freeing themselves from the cruel clutches of poverty. Others can help by giving to worldwide ministries that support the church in those areas. Regardless of economic circumstances, Members in lower income nations have a wealth of gospel passion, spiritual energy, and loving community. These are priceless gifts they want to share with others. Their enthusiasm for witness, invitation, and ministry can bless the church in other nations where participation is lagging. How can different areas of the church give from their kind of abundance and receive what is needed for mutual enrichment? We can form partnerships between fields, mission centers, and congregations around the world that facilitate reciprocal sharing of gifts blessings, and resources. All will be blessed. Such global relationships are central to what it means to be community of Christ engaged in the cause of Zion. How could your group, congregation, or mission center be part of a mutually enriching partnership with the church in another part of the world.